My name's Carl. I've been a lecturer at Unitec School of Architecture for my fourth year now. Even before then, I've always had an interest in digital fabrication, especially 3D printing, and now I'm actually teaching it. So back when I was about second and third year, um, my boss Peter, he started an initiative called um, PMC, uh, Progressive Modeling Consultants, and this was an initiative that was taught by students for students. So it was um, a great way for everyone to help each other and share knowledge. Mm. This place allows for extracurricular activities and yeah. that's where kind of the maker space started. It's just a great way to showcase something that's in 3D, yeah. typically that's in 2D. Right. Um, and something just holding a model gives a better experience to just seeing a 2D drawing and it's, it really helps us see their design process and also materiality because we can feel a model, we can add texture. Everything fits perfectly together. Everything goes um, well, everything goes to plan but the moment you take that model out into the real world you might find tolerances that don't fit and I think that's the biggest thing with 3D printing is allowing students to problem solve in real time and also prototype in real time. So they design print, find a problem, fix it, design print again. We either add texture in, um, in the software or we add texture in the slicer. Um, both achieve different types of um, textures, um, but they both um, add to the delivery of the presentation from a student's point of view. It's just another great tool to help us convey um, design, texture. When I was a student, I, I believe this was back in third year, uh, we did a massive project on Waiheke Island. My expertise back then with 3D printing was quite small um, compared to now. Yeah. But that kind of started something in me that allowed for more digital fabrication and architecture. Now we've, we've seen 3D printing with small models all the way up to large scale houses. Yeah. Um, I think five, ten years down the track we'll, we'll be having large scale buildings, um, skyscrapers from, from 3D printers. It's just a matter of, of technology. We're teaching them how to use a tool to apply to any sort of scenario, whether it's 3D printing a house, 3D printing parts for home, um, 3D printing parts for hobbies. So I personally teach a digital elective class which kind of takes the normal 3D modelling and expands on it. This class is for more imaginative exploration of 3D printing tools. We're starting to design furniture connections. We're starting to design facade connections and systems, um, sculpture, um, not just your what you think architecture is about. We're, we're exploring 3D printing as a manufacturing technique. We're, we're exploring it as a tool to create other tools as well. Before, on the KE and SE version, yeah we can produce this across two or three days. Now, we can produce this in the same day. In the same day? In the same day. And deliver it? And, and deliver it, yeah. Okay. So now students, are, they've got more time to, to enhance their models, to right. prototype, to make mistakes. It's a mouldy cloak used in traditional like formal wear oh, yeah. and so it's very important to Māori culture and it signifies right, like, the right. warmth of your whakapapa and how your lineage is carried through so we wanted to create that in a dynamic form similar to how it's like made and weaved together. We're still getting there, there's going to be around hundreds, there's going to be oh, around 300 okay. just to make the movement and the okay. look very full. Our right. model is one metre by one metre and three metres high. Oh. So the model is also 3D printed or just different? Um, it's going to be a mix. Okay, we, yes. We're still in the concept stage, so at the moment we're thinking the base 
when because um, we have to place it outside and right. because of the conditions right, and yes. wind and everything we need something that's going to yeah. be quite structurally sturdy um, so we're just playing around with materials and what will work for the environment I actually um, took Carl's digital fabrication um, course so with that course at the beginning it was a little bit foreign for me just because before Carl pioneered the makerspace we didn't really have that. Um, it was a challenging concept at the start but then eventually um, he taught us how to use Rhino, um, how to do GL codes, SCL files and then import it to Creality to do the 3D printing. The makerspace I think it's awesome, it's a great addition to um, our architectural journey as students just because we're able to venture out and experiment 